Hello there, everybody. This is Alex from Hardcoin Guys, being my guide for Luigi's Mansion on Hidden Mansion difficulty, going for the A rank. Today, we are doing the last of all four areas, but this will, of course, be the fifth video you guys will get to see. So this is the legitimate part of Area 4 after the blackout happens. Granted, the blackout is a part of Area 4, but I decided to separate them just because it saves trouble and saves time. So, you know, hey, why not? Okay, so this one will be... I can't really tell. It looks like it's longer than the last video from here. It's hard to say. But I did edit out a lot of stuff. And by a lot of stuff, I mean a lot of boo encounters. I try my best to show off every boo encounter that I can and when I catch them. But what I'm aiming to do is to essentially... Right here is a blue ghost, by the way. What I'm essentially aiming to do is cut out all the middle stuff like, you know... If I catch a boo, if I find a boo and he escapes, I just cut that out and just basically just go on my merry way and then, you know, show the clip of me actually catching him to show you guys I actually did, which if you guys don't believe that I'm doing this, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, I don't see why not. This is Luigi's Mansion. It's not that not that tough of a game. Quick tip, the purple puncher cannot actually that's what they're called. Well, he can't actually hit you with the fence in the way. So that's just one little small trick that I learned. And what I'm doing here is completely dumb and shouldn't be done by anybody because I just wasted your guys' time and I actually forgot that I did this at all, so I'm wasting my time too. Uh, essentially, I heard the boo come back because it made that little laugh that essentially sounded like it might have came back to the room, but I guess it didn't. It's been a while since so I recorded this. I don't really remember. But if you do that... Essentially what will happen is you have to fight these ghosts again. And I think you have to suck on that barrel in order to get the puncher to come out and spawn. And then same thing I think goes for this one too over here maybe. I don't know if they... I don't know if you can actually hit A to get him to come out or not. I, I don't know if I tried or not, but I think all my efforts kind of probably failed. Or there might be like a specific position where you need to do it or something. I'm not really 100% sure myself. Uh, with this shelf right here, there's a nice big, I think it's 50 or 30 health, however much it gives you in hidden magic, I'm not sure. Uh, there can be a lot of health for that one. Typically, every time you come back in this room, you can typically get health out of that little shelf, or that little bookshelf right there. Or case thing, not case, but <laughs> whatever, whatever. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not feeling the best today, guys. I have like a headache and feel like throwing up right now for some strange reason. I don't know where this is coming from. I had like a Slim Jim earlier and then a Hot Pocket right after, so I don't know if maybe that might be like coinciding with a lot of the issue or not, but who knows. And plus I was watching the... Uh, it, it didn't start happening until I was watching a video about, you know, Guts, if he can survive in Doom's Hell, and the guy's accent was just... Oh my lord, it's hard to listen to. And then like, his plane looked like Brutal Doom and... There's a bunch of, like, sparks going on and shit, and I think that started giving me a headache a little bit. I don't know. But either way, interesting. So, uh, in here, there's actually a mirror, which I didn't... I don't think I knew about that. I think I just took a guess, and I got lucky. I found that there actually was a mirror, which I was surprised by, because typically any rooms downstairs don't typically have... At least from what I've seen, don't have mirrors. But I guess... I think the, the heart... Or the more... How do you put it? The longer that you play this game, well, you know what I'm saying. Like, the more you progress in this game and you get more keys to specific rooms, they tend to hide the mirrors just in the back. I assume to make the game a little bit more difficult for those that are trying to trek through it, you know. That could be a potential thing that they did. I'm not sure. I'm not 100% sure about that. But if that's the case, well, good on you, Nintendo. Good on you. Definitely hit him pretty well, I'll tell you that, because essentially you can't see, you know, from this view, so you have to literally look yourself. Which, yeah, that sucks, but hey, it's whatever. Alright, so anyway, this room I think is, yeah, I believe it's completely optional, because you can essentially just go straight in the other room from here. Most of the time, the boos will spawn in these chests, and I like to get these chests open before the boo spawns, that way I can try to get money to pop out. Other chests, because typically if they, from what I've noticed, if they are actually in the chest itself and then, or anywhere that has money in it and you spawn them, they'll spawn a boo instead of money. So therefore, 
There goes that. Alright, so these are the toy soldiers. I know one of them is the... F they... I believe they differ in speed. I think one of them is like the fastest. I don't know which one that would be. Might be the green one. And I think the middle one is the slowest one. And I think I think pink is the one that has the pearls. I could be completely wrong on that. Might even be this guy. Ah, it's one of them. I can't tell if it's green or if it's blue. It's either blue or green, it looks like. So green's on the side right there. Maybe it wasn't the middle one. Well, no, because the purplish looking blue one... Yeah, okay, so the middle one is the one that has the pearls. So if I were you, I'd go for that last. And also, being careful of their core guns is very... Well, it's probably the best tip I can really give you because these things hurt like hell. And there are times, like, not in this playthrough though, but in earlier playthroughs, either by myself or just in general that I was doing recording for, I end up actually getting hit by, I think, one of their guns, and then the other one hit me again, and... You know, even when I'm on the ground, I already got hit. That I think they can still hit you, and I, I think that's kind of stupid. I think it's kind of cheap. But then again, the game is somewhat relatively easy enough to, you know, get by without hopefully having any any danger, too much danger. But that that, that happens. It typically happens, you know. So things things will happen. So I keep checking my phone. It was my sister's birthday, and I'm just making sure she hasn't really, like, texted me back or anything yet. She just did earlier, but I'm just checking to see if there was anything else that was going to be said or not. I typically do that. I'm always worried about, like, when people text me. It's just a thing I do. Or, you know, I'm kind of worrying about if I should say something back to her or not. You know, that's just how I am. <laughs> well, anyway, so off topic here. Oh, that's off topic. On topic here. Coming up to the rooftop part of the game. This is, I believe, the highest point that you can actually get to, I believe. And this is technically where you fight off, you know, King Boo and basically his Bowser form and all that great stuff. So, yeah, what I recommend doing here is just using fire on the Shy Guys. I mean, if you have confidence in catching, like, two or three at a time, by all means, go for it. Uh, I only had, like, a small bit of confidence there at all. So, well, luckily for me, I actually got lucky enough to actually get that. And these guys will spawn, just burn them up, you know. Not, nothing too bad, nothing too troublesome, really. Just simple little ghosts, nothing too bad up here. And then to the left, as soon as we catch these guys, on the left there's a ladder that's going to spawn a key. It's going to spawn a chest with a key. And then on the right will be a sort of secret room, but I think, yeah, I think it's optional. Because I think the key that spawns gives you the key to the little girl's room. The one that you gotta go and wet the bed with. You know what I'm saying? Well, okay, that sounded a little bit more wrong than I meant to. But, uh, yeah, essentially, when you go over to that side, uh, you know, you go inside the room and all that. And, well, you grab the water and you wet the bed. I was totally losing my thought process there. I was losing what I was thinking of at in general. So what I was doing there was seeing if it would work. I heard of a trick that you can actually turn on your camera before you fall down and it will basically skip all that, but it didn't work for me because more than likely I did something wrong, so who's to say? I think we actually, this might be yeah, I think this actually might be the last speedy spirit. I'm not really 100% sure. I kind of lost count, by the way, so forgive me for that. And I think that there might be... It's funny, I always say that. I always say, like, I think. Well, I mean, I, I do. I really think that the ghosts spawn in not only, like, the big chest, but I think there's, like, a particular amount of chests that they do spawn in. And I think, like, the big ones over here on the stairs... I don't know if it's, like, one of them or if it's a few of them that'll spawn them. Or if there's no particular order, I'm not sure. What the heck just happened there? It looked like it lagged out for a second. Hopefully, hopefully the video is good. It should be. I don't see why it wasn't. I'm currently uploading the last episode right now. And also, my PlayStation finally downloaded Resident Evil 4. No, I haven't finally downloaded Resident Evil 4. My new PlayStation has finally downloaded. I've been getting the mood to play it again. But you know what? Why not? Because one day I want to do like a professional guide for it. Because I, I like the game. I love the game. It's great. I just haven't been good enough to actually beat it yet. 
For those wondering, I'm planning on doing God of War 2 next, my guide, because I couldn't really find anything particular that I wanted to play. And after doing, like, the first episode, I was like, Ugh, I don't know, I mean, I'm getting kind of wrecked here, and I don't like that too much. Yeah, I guess it might just be one chest. Okay, I'll say this. I recorded an episode of God of War 2, but things may vary. I may just change up my guide. I'm not sure yet. God of War 2 is my placeholder for right now. So, again, for those that are probably going to... Well, if anybody does it, you know, they'll probably end up watching the end of the video and figuring out what the heck I'm going to do next instead. Which I think people probably do, because typically I get more views on the first episode and the last episode of any guide that I do. That way, I think people are probably looking forward to... Which I completely understand. You know, they're always trying to make sure, like, what I'm going to do next. So that way they can probably, you know, up their schedules or something. Or try to, you know, figure out... Hey, should I be interested in watching this or not? So, if you do that, that's fine. I understand, because... I mean, there are times where I'll do the same thing, you know, with people I watch. But I typically don't watch... A lot of people all the time anymore. If anything, I usually go back and watch people's older stuff rather than newer stuff for the most part. It's like I haven't watched Bick Benedict in I don't know how long. And I might end up watching him for either Vanquish or Ninja Gaiden 2. I, I want to learn Ninja Gaiden 2 on my own. That way I can kind of figure it out for myself. But that's still a rel relatively tough game. But I feel like I could probably. I feel like I can probably do it. I got some confidence with that one. I'm not sure yet. I mean, I've been wanting to play it, but I played it for a bit and I stopped, and I don't know why. Just probably just boredom or just wanting to go do something else. Not boredom because the game's bad, by any means. I just, whenever I play games for too long, I'll get bored of one particular game or just get an interest in doing something completely else. Or even watching games or something, you know. I, I get that, that mood sometimes where you play too much and it's like, okay, I want to go do something else for a while, and that's me. I.e., well, I'm going to be playing Resident Evil 4 for a little bit until I get bored of that and just go do something else. But when it comes to guides, I typically try to stick with it as long as I can. Unlike Infinite, where, you know, we did that one for I don't know how long, and then I just got bored, like, halfway through it. Ah, oh, man, that one was kind of a nightmare, but I'm glad I got it done. You know, we did it well enough, I hope. Hopefully everything went well with that one for you guys. I got some feedback on it that said, you know, hey, great job. You did a good job. And it's like, okay, thanks. You know, appreciate the support, though. Any, any helps at all kind of keeps me going, you know, a little bit. Why do I keep saying, you know? I don't know. Well, either way, this is the last episode, so I'm just trying to have as much fun as I possibly can here. Not because it's the last episode, but because, you know, got to make it exciting for all the people that are probably going to end up watching this video and not watch the other ones. Hey, like I said, I don't blame you. You guys can watch whatever you want. I'm not stopping you. I'm not stopping you. And I won't even if I got popular. Notice how I said even if. Which means I'm not sure if I'm ever going to. But hey, if I ever did, I would probably end up still being somewhat the same way I'm now. Where it's like, you know, you guys can watch whatever you want. I don't care. You know, I enjoy the fact that people watch me, but they have their own lives. And me too. So... I can't always be here to do these videos, but I am now. Heck, I haven't started recording Ninja Gaiden 3 yet for my main channel, which I need to. I've just been so out of it lately. Just, I mean, because I got work coming up pretty soon, and, you know, I'm just trying, I guess, to not essentially get everything done really fast, but just relax and kick back, and I keep sleeping for too long, and just, you know, resting up my little... My little cute little eyes, you know. <laughs> nah, I just... Getting lazy, man. Getting lazy. And more than likely, when I go back to work, it's gonna be like, Oh man, I miss having days off. I miss this. You know, we never have enough time off. And like, I think I said this in the last video, too, where it's like... I say that, and then the weeks come by, and I just ruin it for myself. I completely utterly ruin days off for myself because I'm I don't do anything with my life you know I don't have any reason to really but I just don't do enough and I think as much as I hate to admit it even though I do say it you know work kind of keeps that balance pretty okay you know kind of keeps 
you know, the things that uh, makes the weekends more enjoyable, so to speak. Or you know how, like, some people like mediocre shit only because it makes everything else that's better than that mediocre shit ten times better than what it would have been naturally. So it's just that kind of thought process I'm trying to break in my head, but it won't ever happen. But then again, I think the balance is kind of broken a little bit because sometimes I work more than I actually am home more often, I feel like. Especially with, you know, specific Sundays that we have to work on and what have you, or weekend days. Which pretty much is only just Sunday for me, which is good, but still, still it's never fun. Alright, coming into here, we're going to have a garbage can, and the thing with this room is you are the one that spawns the ghost. So a lot of the rooms that are upstairs and downstairs typically have this, where they had this gimmick now. I think it's mostly just upstairs, not really downstairs. But mostly upstairs has these rooms where you come into, and then you click on something, and then a ghost spawns, and then you just take care of that. Same thing with like that sealed room earlier, you know. You click on those chests, and bam, out comes a ghosty goo. And, of course, if you miss it, they will respawn, and this guy gets stuck. And I think he's actually stuck in his animation of trying to hit me. Like, I don't know if you guys can hear it or not, but I believe there was an audio cue there where it sounded like he was literally trying to hit me, but he couldn't because he was stuck behind the statue. So we got him good there. And after we get done with this room, I don't know if I... I might try... I, I think I do try to catch the boo. And he gets away, and so I let him get away, and then I go into the room with the the Jar Ghost, which I forget his name. It might even just be the Jar Ghost. I don't know. But we go into that room, take care of him, and then I think we have every room clear upstairs, which is good, so that way I can go catch booze better, so I don't have to keep, you know, running around back and forth. I mean, I still will have to run around back and forth, but since they're not in the dark, it makes it a lot easier to catch them. Thankfully, except for the hallway, because you have to collect Van Gore in order to get the hallway to be lit up, I believe. So that kind of takes away the fun of the boo. Or maybe not even that. I don't know if he actually clears it out or not. I don't exactly remember. All right, so here's Under Boo. Oddly enough, he's got 150 health and not 300. By the way, folks, if you didn't know, the last boo is going to drop the second gold diamond whatever the heck that thing was the the big big gem that we need jewel whatever and he will also have like 300 health so he's gonna be a tank to take down but we'll be prepared for that because we're gonna have other boos that are gonna have 300 health and i think we might already had some that already have 300 health or had i should say most likely okay into this room we go so, I think to get the Jar Guy to spawn, you might have to have ice equipped. I don't know if that's true. Every time I walk up to him, I feel like I need it on for some reason. I don't know why. This thing is odd. And also, I don't know why this is. This is just a me thing. But for some reason, whenever I come into this room, I keep thinking of Yojo Sinki. And I don't know why. It, it, just one of those things. Because, like, I have, I think, the first volume for the manga... And I haven't read it yet. I mean, I've watched the anime all 12 of as I could. And I have the first volume. I, Yeah, I know it's the first one for sure. I just don't know if I have the other volumes or not. If they even have any. Because I know it's like a light novel as well. Which, I'm not a big fan of light novels. But hey, you know, teeth are own. And I think at the time, I was probably like wanting to do that. And then while I was playing this game in this room. And that's probably where it spawned in my head. I don't know. It's just random stuff that comes up speaking of random well actually first let's take care of this guy uh, all you gotta do is just shoot him seven different times and you win really not that tough really um this was something i was thinking of today it's like a, it's kind of like a topic on hand like if you guys want to go ahead and you know post comments and stuff go ahead now keep in mind if you post a comment that's like years in advance i probably won't know what the heck you're talking about because i'll probably forget so, hopefully, what I need to do, actually, is make a video on my main channel talking about this topic. That way I can at least know what the heck everybody's talking about. But I'll talk about it here anyway, because this guy is super easy to catch. Not that hard. He's going to throw vases at you, but it's not that tough. Just 
come over in this corner and you can basically avoid all of it. It's nothing. It's nothing. So now we're going to go catch some booze. I'm going to edit some of that stuff out. So, yeah. Anyway, back to what I want to talk about. I feel like nowadays, there's not enough hack and slash games. And that might be a bad way to phrase it. What I should be saying is, I feel like there's not a lot of... Not necessarily original hack and slash games, but not a lot of games like Ninja Gaiden or Devil May Cry. Or, you know, with that stylistic action type stuff. Granted, there's two new games that I've heard of that I think are Steam only. Sorry guys, I had to cut that out for there for a second. My phone was ringing and I... Completely forgot that I left it on. Uh, I'll have to call them back later then. That was just my stepmom calling me. I whew, scared the living bejeebus out of me, to be honest with you. God damn. All right. So, oops. Anyway, uh, there's two games that I've heard of that are on Steam, and they have that stylistic action to it that I like, that kind of flavors, you know, a little bit with the, uh, what do you call it, Devil May Cry Ninja Gaiden style. So you got this one game called Assault Spy, I believe it is. It's essentially like an anime style, like, businessy type game, but it's got that Devil May Cry Bayonetta-ish stylistic gameplay that I like. You know, you even have, like, the style system that works, too, so, or that's in it, too, that, you know, fits with it. And then there's this new game, it's like an alien game. Not alien, but it's you play as an alien, I believe. It's called Nilo, N-E-L-O, and looks pretty cool. I don't think it came out yet. I'm not sure. I think both games are early access. I'm not sure. I think a Soul Spy is like yeah, a Soul Spy is like 20 bucks early access. I don't know what Nilo is yet. I don't know if it came out yet or not. But anyway, you know those games are on Steam only that I am aware of, and. That kind of bugs me. I mean, granted, I could get them. You know, they they might they probably would work on my computer. Maybe. It's just I don't trust my computer enough to have them work. And my other problem is the fact that it seems to me <laughs> this is where the topic really stems from. Is it seems to me that most hack and slash games, at least nowadays or have been for a while typically are in the anime style, and like I, I'm not, I'm, I'm gonna say this right now. I don't have anything wrong with anime style. Not at all. It's just, those particular games that I'm looking for, like when I search up hack and slash, and I'm looking through, I'm just, you know, struggling through finding like anything that at least appeals me in any way, I typically come across just nothing but a bunch of anime games. And like I said, you know, that's fine, you know, whatever. I mean, at least they exist. It just bugs me that there's nothing else but that. There's not enough just, you know, differentiated, or just a bunch of different, dare I almost say original, you know, non -an Okay, how about this? Not anime and slash games. I just don't feel like there's enough out there. And that could be because maybe of a lack of community support, you know, because, like, a lot of people probably don't even like hack and slash games that much. I mean, yeah, you got Bayonetta 3 that's coming out, and people are probably going to buy it, but I feel like when it comes to the hack and slash community, it's just, and beat em up you know, as well, is, to me, it always feels like we're just one singular community. And take, for instance, like, Big Benedict, you know, he'll play nothing but character action, that's what they call him now, I guess, character action, or, you know, what I call it, hack and slash games. Or beat em ups. You know, third person like games where you combo, kind of like a fighting game. You know, you beat up enemies with combos and stuff like that. That's not a fighting game. It's hard to explain, but for those that are, you know, around my generation of people, <laughs> I guess, we would call them hack and slash or beat em ups. You know, like Dumb Mike Ryan, Ninja Gaiden, Metal Gear Rising, stuff like that. You know, he doesn't play first-person shooters. I mean, he'll play third-person shooters, but not first-person. So, that limits him heavily. And I mean heavily. Because compare him to Seraphim17, and it's like, oh my lord, you know? Seraphim, I think, has like 20,000 subs? I 
Heck, I don't even really pay attention. Last time I remember, like, looking, I think it was like 20,000 or something. I, I'm i not really sure of myself. But, regardless, you know, he's got a lot more subs than Big Benedict does. I think Big's got like 6,000 last time I checked. And I think it has something to do with, like, his wanting to play games that are of a variety that are very, I wouldn't say obscure, but just not a lot of people play, and especially hard mode, because I think that even hurts it even more, because, like, not a lot of people like challenging games nowadays, or just hard games anymore. I mean, they, they do, but they don't like it the way, I guess, the hack and slash and beat-em-up community probably would. That's what I'm trying to get at. For instance, you know, how many people play God of War on God mode? Probably not a lot. Or even, like, the new God of War, you know? The new God of War on Give Me God of War difficulty. Like, how many people probably play that right now? Probably not a lot. They'll probably watch it, but they probably won't touch it, you know? Or even give it a try, because, granted, and this is my opinion as well, it's kind of boring, but that's just me. Because, I mean, until you get to, like, specific boss fights that will probably give you a huge challenge, but to me, you know, I tried it out for a little bit, and then I learned some strategies, and I figured out, you know, I can probably, I can beat it, probably, that's stretching it, but there's a possibility I could beat it, you know, but I just feel like it just gets repetitive with the strategy that you use, which is essentially just throwing the axe back and forth, back and forth, until later game when you have to utilize both the axe and the blades, and that most likely will probably get much harder. So, it's hard to say. But, like, I'm saying, like, not a lot of people play that style. They don't really... They'll play the game, but they probably won't play on the hardest difficulty setting. So, therefore, limits everybody, you know, that does, that does these kind of videos. So, and, like I said, my main issue is the fact that there's not a whole lot of hack and slash beat em up character action games that are not anime style. I mean, look at uh, Sinrin. Uh, is it Sinrin? What the fuck's it called? Damn it. It's an anime game that's basically hack and slash. Like, from the outward looking in, from what I've seen of it, like, it looks like it's one of those games that tries to appeal to, like, you know, fan servicey and all that stuff. But, from what I've heard, it's got some pretty decent combat, and it definitely. You know, acts like it should, but it also has like that Dynasty Warriors going on with it too, where there's like multiple enemies that spawn, but I think they only spawn in specific locations. It's hard to explain. It's one of those games I would have to probably like actually play play in order to do it. And plus, they have God knows how many games of that. I think <laughs> probably a lot. And that's the other thing too, is when it comes to like anime games, they typically have a lot of spin-offs or a lot of main series. Or even, you know, freaking uh, DLC, which that Senren, Senren game, or whatever it's called, has a lot of DLC for the the Beach Peach, or Peach Beach game as well. <laughs> so, yeah, I looked. There's a lot. And when I say anime games, I'm particular when I'm talking about the Hack and Slash, or just anime games in general, I'm talking about games that have an anime style. And when I say anime, I mean literally like a Japanese, you know, animation style. Which we're all, we should all be familiar with anime, so that shouldn't be hard to say. But, you know, people want specifics. They want to know specifics. I feel like that's hard to give nowadays with all these different tropes and different types of genres we have. It's crazy. It's insane. Alright, so what am I doing here? Because there's going to be a cut soon. I don't know why. Okay, maybe there wasn't a cut. Question is, what the heck? Oh, I think I'm going back upstairs. Maybe I was going to cut the video, but then I forgot. That could be it. Oh, God. I am not feeling too good. My stomach is just going all kinds of wild right now. But luckily, we're getting pretty close to the end of the video. Grand, I'm going to have to do the whole, you know, that deal. Talk about, like, what I feel about the game. You know, the difficulty of it and stuff like that. Which, you guys probably already know my answer now. In terms of difficulty. It's not like that tough. It's not that tough. But then again, you take this game and then you look at freaking uh, Mario Sunshine. And it's like, what the hell happened? You know what I'm saying? That's that's the crazy. That's the crazy part. That's that's the part that gets me though. Excuse me, one sec, fellas. I might 
Uh, I don't know. Probably right now. Right now, I'm, I was gonna say like maybe I might sit on the floor instead. That way I can just not have this fucking cramping going on. Yeah, it it happens. My digestive tract is just going crazy right now. But before I explode, uh, we have Van Gore to fight. Oh yes, the magnificent Van Gore, and apparently he's French for some reason. Because I guess all French people like the paint. What do you know? I guess. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not here to I'm not here to judge. I'm not here to say what's racist and what isn't. Who cares? Who freaking cares? So Van Gore All his boss fight really consists of is just pretty much cleaning house. You're taking out, I think, every single type of ghost. That's not speed spirit, gold mice. Just the basic attacking enemy ghosts that you see around the mansion. I should say that, at least. That's essentially what you are fighting against. Is it difficult? Uh, not necessarily, because they do spawn like three at a time, and there is health around the room that you can pick up. I'm taking a lot of damage because I'm stupid. That's just me, though. Because as you can see here, they typically group up in threes, and then if you can get a nice shine like... I almost did, but I messed up, then this will be relatively easy for you to do. And also, since I have fire on, you can actually use, if you grabbed it though, you can use fire to your advantage. And I'm probably gonna... Oh man, I don't know. Might have to sit on the floor for a second here, guys. Sorry about this, and you know, me being me, like typical. I have to move the mic downward, that way I can kind of, sort of talk into it. So here, here's some movement in just a second. That's just me, don't mind me. The, the, all this stuff's just, again, basic, simple stuff. I'm gonna get up and push my chair out of the way. I know, I know, I know. I know, I know, completely unprofessional, but hey. What can you do, right? All right, so now we're gonna fight the grapplers. Again, just burn them, if anything. I mean, if you have any elements whatsoever, just use it here, I recommend. I mainly kept it for these guys, because the Shy guys, I feel like, are more of a pain to deal with. I mean, granted, I did get a triple right there, which was pretty freaking cool. And of course, if you get more than one ghost at a time, you are rewarded health, which is always nice. Now, for some reason, I don't know why, but the garbage cans, I can never get three of them at a time. I don't know why. It's just strange. <laughs> I suck at this game. Let's be honest, I suck. All right. Yeah, I am having trouble moving around, it seems. I don't know what is wrong with me, man. I also need to go need to go pee as well. That's not good. This kind of sucks. Like, I don't want to quit the video, you know, almost near the end. We're about to go fight Bowser. Just randomly just cut. That would probably just be relatively annoying to do. Because <laughs> then I have to edit it, you know, and figure out where the heck I split it up at and all that great stuff, which I haven't really done a whole lot of that before. I've done it before, but not much, so it's kind of hard to remember exactly what to do specifically. All right, here we go. Last of the ghosts, the ceiling ghosts. Yeah, they're... Ooh, that was a nice pop. They're nothing. Just, you know, burn them, or if you can, catch them in one go and you're good. And then for Van Gore, he is a relatively super easy boss. And I think even if you let go of him, I think he just pops up right back where he was and just doesn't try anything to fight you with. Which is strange, because like most ghosts... Mm, yeah, let's put it lightly. Not most, but some ghosts in this game typically like to fight against you. And it seems like uh, this is not one of them. I mean, granted, you know, you had Mr. Lugs, you had Spooky, I think his name was, the dog ghost. Which, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, you had... Petunia, maybe? I don't know. I don't think so. No? Probably not. Well, you had Melody, kind of. I mean, she used her piano, but that's about it. Alright, so right here, he drops the giant gem thingy. Basically, the last of these things we really need to catch. Well, it definitely won't be the last money we get, though. But it definitely is the last of the two big big currency things that we get though which is great yeah now i'm back in my chair again now i feel a little bit better 
Sorry, folks. I know, it. W these longer episodes, they typically end up becoming like this. Because they're so long, and apparently my body needs to... Well, I guess, rest every five freaking minutes or something. I don't know why, I'm just too damn weak. Way too damn weak. <laughs> okay, so, I saved the game. I think there was a thing with it, though. I, I remember hearing this, I'm not exactly sure. David's told me, I don't know how many times, he's probably gonna slap me after he watches this video. Just telling me, like, no, freaking idiot. Like, this is what you do. I remember hearing a long time ago something about saving the game. It's either you save the game after you collect the last, you know, gold diamond thingy. You know, after you collect the 50th boo. Or if it's, uh, you save the game before. And then, no, I think if you save the game before and you leave the game, then you come back to your save spot, but you lose the jewel thingy. I don't know if that's correct. I don't know. I don't know, okay? I remember Chuck Conway mentioning it before, and that's all. I always tend to forget which order it is. Just whatever. Just save your game multiple times just to be on the safe side. That way at least you have it. Okay, so coming into King Boo's room, uh, there's going to be a lamp up on the top of the ceiling here. It's going to drop a sapphire jewel right there. Gem, jewel, emerald, cut. I don't, I don't know. So glad it's almost over because I don't have to talk about that anymore. Not glad it's almost over because I don't like the game. But because I'm just getting tired of trying to explain myself. I'm sure there's probably like a wiki somewhere that'll tell me, but hey. I think right there on the right side, there is a mirror. But, um, yeah, I think there actually is. There should be. Okay, so anyway, this is Bowser's fight. And oh my lord. Man, he took me down quite a bit. It's hard for me to actually get a gold portrait on him, on Hid Mansion one, which I feel like it's easier to get gold portraits on in general. So, the trick here with him is you're essentially trying to catch these mines or exploding balls, and you're trying to shoot him right back at him. Now, there you can actually hit him when his mouth is open, when he's, you know, bursting out in fire. It's technically better to do it when he's trying to suck you up in the air vacuum thingy. But you can essentially get a hit like this. Like, see, he's about to launch fire right there. But I got him hit just in time to where it actually still registered that it hit him. I heard that you can do the whole, like, boo lock thing here. I think I tried it a few times. I can't exactly get it to work, but that's just me. Bowser is relatively simplistic, but he, he can hurt, like, massively. Especially that thing right there. So, whenever he's about to open his mouth and do literally anything, I always recommend running far enough back away from him. That way, you don't have to worry about the whole fire catching you. And running to the either left or right side of his head, that way you can avoid, you know, getting sucked up as well. So try to do that simultaneously just in case, because I never really know exactly which one he's going to do. So I like to play it more safe and hope that he doesn't actually hit me. And of course, if he hits you with the ice, it will screw you up. And I don't know if this is random or not, but every once in a while, he'll actually get his head to be turned around. And I think on normal mode, most of the pillars will actually spawn health. And I think I actually had a health that spawned at one point, but for some reason, it didn't spawn. But at least, I didn't see it, so I don't know if it actually spawned or not. That's what I'm trying to say. But can't get myself to say it. So, as you see there, you know, if you want to go for Gold Portrait, by all means, give it a shot. It's pretty tough. I mean, I just have no patience, and plus, I was doing a video, so... To me, it was like, I gotta do this in one go, just get it over with already. Although, it took me multiple takes, because I did actually get a couple game overs, I think it was. At least one in this playthrough, but multiples and, like, other ones, because he can be tough. If you, if you get just randomly caught in whatever, he can destroy you. Like, that suck thing that he does when he sucks you up, that does a lot of damage. And the fire, too. Because he can actually not only burn you, but attack you a second time while you're being burned. And, man, is it just... It kills you. It knocks you down to, like, 50 health, I think. It's just ridiculous. So, really, with him, just be very, very, very patient. Be very, very careful. And if you need to, just stand behind a pillar. That way you can hope for the best. Hopefully that he throws a ball toward the pillar and stops. You grab it, you go, you shoot him down, so. It took me like a few 
a few headshots there, as you saw, and of course, you know, with him running with his head on backward, which might be caused by me. I don't know. It looked like it might have been. And when he was running backwards, just try to run to the left or right of him, just constantly, because that's what he's going to keep doing, is just running right to left. I think every time he starts to run up, he'll run toward you, so that's why I recommend running to just one of the sides away from him. And if he's like... If he's kind of facing toward a wall, try to, you know, steer him into that wall so that way you can just avoid it and let him ricochet off and go somewhere else. So, I don't know what kind of portrait that is. Might be silver, might be bronze. I don't really know for sure. Probably freaking bronze. What was that noise? That was weird. Anyway, so, that's literally it, guys. That's all the ghost. I'm going to cut out the whole Mario thing. I'm going to cut out the credits and we're just gonna show what ghost I caught in this area and then show my mansion I got A rank and then we'll talk for a little bit and I'll explain all that when we get there I caught 23 ghosts is that total I think yep and right there look at that I think I beat my score by three looks like maybe like three million or so which is crazy so that's it folks there you go Luigi's Mansion Hidden Mansion A rank run and I did it relatively well. I beat both my score and got pretty freaking close to like 130 million or however much it is, looks like. Uh, I'll have to see it again to figure it out. If I'll ever pop up. Might be too small to see from here, I can't tell. And it goes dark, of course. That looks like a million to me. No, that looks like a billion. Oh, heck, I don't even freaking... I don't, I'm stupid, I don't know what I'm talking about. All right. So there you go, folks. That is the end of Luigi's Mansion Hidden Mansion Guide for getting A rank. Again, you only need, I think, 100 or maybe 110 million, billion, whatever it is, in order to essentially get an A rank. I think that's what it is. There's 15 speedy spirits and there's 10 mice. And you guys hopefully know the locations of them. If you don't, you can always look it up yourselves and find them that way, kind of like I did, be on the safe side. And yeah, um,. This definitely was worth it. I know I played like five different times just to get the best I could. I didn't get all the gold portraits, unfortunately, but I tried and, you know, it failed. And I was like, okay, whatever. We'll just keep the guy the way it is. It's just an A rank guide, so whatever. You know, who cares? Getting gold portraits definitely helps with the A rank, but it's not essential. And again, you can miss some of the blue ghosts and mice, too, and then you can still get A rank. There's still that probability, especially if you get those two big diamonds that spawn from the plant in the last boo, and then you are more likely guaranteed at least probably like a B rank or something. I don't know. So, on a scale of 1 to 10, like I always do for all my guides, how difficult do I think Hidden Mansion is? Probably like a 2 out of 10. Especially with A rank. I think A rank probably would make it like a 2.5, maybe 3. But I'd say definitely like a 1 or 2 out of 10. Just flat Hidden Mansion right there, you know. Going for A rank is a little harder because you have to be more manageable. But then again, this is a hidden mansion. They give you a stronger poultry dust so you can, you know, suck up ghosts a lot faster and better. That's my initial thoughts. There's really not much left to say about Luigi's Mansion besides it's a great freaking game. I'm glad that Nintendo made it. It's one of the best survival horror games out there. I say it's a survival horror because it kind of is. Although, no it's not because you don't actually have items to worry about, so... Yeah, that was stupid of me to say that. I mean, it's got horror aspects to it and kind of survival aspects, but not really. I mean, you have health management, but that's about it. So, really, it's not much of a survival horror, but hey, you know, take it as you see it. Whatever people call it, they call it that. So, great freaking GameCube launch title. I loved it. Loved it ever since. And I still played it to this day. As you can definitely tell, I went through like three or four different playthroughs just trying to get this playthrough to work. So, thank you all for coming in and watching and hopefully enjoying it. I know it's kind of short, but, you know, short and sweet always just kind of works out. More li more than likely, I think God of War 2 is next. I don't know exactly when anybody else is planning any videos or not, but we'll find out if they do. God of War 2, like I said, is most likely next. Unfortunately, kind of. <laughs> Maybe I'll feel different when I start actually doing commentary for it, but the first video just, it felt like it was just, you know, I was having a hard time, I think, just sucking at it. It's been a long time since I played it. 
But maybe if I actually get back to the groove of it, I might do better. So, hopefully you guys enjoyed this guide. And maybe it might have helped you, maybe it might not have. Or just might have entertained you, I don't know. But, if it did, I'm glad. And of course, if you want to go watch my main stuff, see my main channel, it is on my channel page. It is TurdMonkey4997. Uh, look it up and take Rano is David's channel. You can find it again on this main channel page here. So, like, you know, you can... I'm not going to have it pop up, but you can find it. You click on my name or my profile pic and all that, and you go to my channel, then you can find it on the side with, uh... It should say my main channel and friends tab, so... There you go. All right. Hope you guys have a good night, and I uh, hope to see you guys in the next guide that I'm going to be doing. So, as always... Take care, everybody.